Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel and in this video tutorial we're working on this cute project for my reversible round quilted basket. So let's start off by showing you how to make the template that we're going to be using to make these little baskets. So here I have two baskets, two different sizes. This one's a little bit smaller. This is the one that we're going to be working on in this video today. And then this one is a little bit larger and I'll show you how you can make one this size. It's the exact same steps. You're just starting off with a template that's a little bit bigger. So to start off, I'm just grabbing one sheet of cardstock here. It measures eight and a half inches by 11, a regular sheet of paper. And then we're going back to elementary school here, busting out the compass. And we're going to make a circle. Now, if you don't have a compass and you don't want to do this, you can also grab like a saucer or a dish. We just want it for this size. You want it to be eight inches in diameter and diameter on a circle means from one end of the circle to the other. So all the way across. Okay. That's eight inches for the smaller basket. For the bigger one, we've cut out a circle template here that measures 10 inches in diameter. So from here to here is 10 inches. Now to do that with a compass, I'm just going to set it up to the four inch mark here because four is half of eight. And this is going to start off from the center out. So that's the radius. Okay and just start off in the center of the sheet and work your way around make sure you're not going to go off the edge and then you're just going to lightly take your compass and make your circle now you probably can't see that because the pencil is kind of light so i always like to go back take just a sharpie marker or permanent marker or a darker color and just trace around it once you've done that go ahead and cut around it and you're ready for your template i like to cut it out of cardstock or a manila folder, that way you can reuse it over and over again. Now for the 10 inch one, it's obviously gonna be bigger than the sheet allows. So what I did here was I glued together, or you can tape them, two sheets of paper, two eight and a half sheets by, uh, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, just glue them together down the center, and then you would set your compass to five inches, because five is gonna be the radius of a 10 inch circle. And then do that in the middle and you can see here I have them together and again out of cardstock so you can save your template pieces. So decide whether you want the 8 inch circle or the 10 inch circle and then we're going to start moving on to the next step. So once you have your circle template we're going to lay it over fabric and batting. So what you need is two layers of fabric. One is going to be for the outside and then another one for the inside lining so decide what you want to use for that and then another circle of a lightweight batting. I've tried this project using a few different types of stabilizers and interfacings and I find that the thicker the product, the chunkier it is and kind of the stiffer it is so it, it doesn't have this nice drape. So just get a light cotton or cotton polyester or a lightweight polyester batting would be fine as well. And we're going to cut the circle out of the three pieces. So two fabric pieces and one of batting. Now we are going to layer these up and we're going to quilt one layer at the sewing machine. So decide which one you want on the outside or inside. At this point, it's really not going to matter because remember, the little basket is reversible. So it's going to be great. So just layer one of the fabrics over. I like to use Sulky KK2000 as a basting spray and just hit the fabric with a quick spray. Lay it down and do the same thing to the other side just to help keep the layers together while you're sewing. And then we'll take it over to the sewing machine and we're actually just going to use a straight stitch. If you want to do free motion quilting, you can do that or you can just use basic straight stitches and quilt this up. All right, so this step you can actually skip it and put all your layers together, but I find that it just makes everything a little bit easier. The layers stay together nicer. And all I'm doing is taking a kind of an elongated straight stitch on my machine, about a 3.0, and I'm just gonna stitch real close to the outside edge about an eighth of an inch away. Now I wanna show you how I'm sewing around in the round, okay? Because some people have trouble with this. It's not really stop and go. Look at the motion of my fingers and I'm kind of turning it this way as it feeds through the machine. And I tend to go really fast, but you can totally do this slower. And the same idea, just feed that fabric through, but in a rotating motion. Now there's no real set seam allowance for this. I'm just trying to base the two layers together, the fabric and the batting. So now I'll come back and add the second piece of fabric. And I just find that it, by doing it one at a time like that, it's just a little bit easier for me to keep the layers together. So I'm just gonna blast that real quick with some spray base. Just a little is enough. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stitch it up from this side, okay, so that I can see it. Real close to the edge again. At this point, I kind of look around sometimes and see if I need to trim anything down to make it a little bit more even. I see I have a little extra fabric there. 
This doesn't matter too much. It doesn't have to be super perfect, okay? Because it's all going to be gathered up. But now we have our two layers. And notice the orientation of our fabrics. The pretty side on one side facing up, pretty side on the other side facing up. You can quilt through these layers now. You can quilt through them before we started to sew these layers together. But this one I'm going to do it so that it's not even quilted. So you can play around with the project and customize it to your needs. Now we need to gather this up into a circle. So here comes a little trick. I like to use some yarn. You can use dental floss, you can use fishing line, you can use embroidery floss, whatever you want. Some type of string that's not too wide, but that is nice and sturdy. And so I'm going to do this as a trick to gather up my fabric. Instead of stitching two layers of stitching and gathering it that way, I'm going to zigzag stitch over my yarn, my wire. I've also used a thin like jewelry wire like this, and you can use that as well. So just whatever you have on hand that will allow you to have a sturdy string going down the middle. I'm gonna change my settings on my machine to a zigzag stitch, and it's gonna be pretty wide. On my machine, I'm setting it at a 6.0 width, how wide it's going, and the stitch length is gonna be a 3.0. Now, I'm gonna start anywhere around the circle. I'm leaving a tail of about five or six inches, and then I'm bringing it close to my outer edge. And what the idea is, I'm trying to keep the yarn going down the center of my presser foot so that the zig and the zag motion is going on either side of it. So it's not actually catching the yarn, it's just going on either side. So I'll show you how that looks. And this is going to be tricky at first if you've never used this technique before to gather fabric. Just take your time. Keep whatever string you're using down the center of the presser foot and then remember to rotate the fabric as it's stitching. When I come near the end, I try to get it as close as I can to that next one. All right, and take a couple back stitches there. Now I'm going to trim this yarn so that I have two long tails hanging out here at the end. So this is what it looks like. I have a circle, yarn is caught inside there, and I have two ends on this side. So let's head over to the work table here and show you how I gather it. So here I have my two tails. Notice what happens when I start to pull on one of them. I'm kind of going to wrap it around my finger and give it a good pull. It's starting to gather. Now I work those gathers over and away from me, over and away from me, until I start to gather about halfway up the basket. And then I'll come in on the other side from the other end and do the same thing as well. Make sure you leave yourself nice long tails, otherwise if you pull too hard on this side, since it's one continuous piece, you'll pull this one out on the other. But when those gathers get too tight, you gotta loosen them back the other way and bring them back in. And so this part is going to be completely up to you how much you want to gather your basket or how tight you want to make the top opening be, okay? All right, so I kind of start to look at it from the top and say, it feels like it's still flat here. I want it gathered a little more right there. That looks good on that side and I can leave it there. And what I find that the yarn does, notice I don't have to be holding on to it. it, it keeps its shape, like it keeps the gathers in place. So I think this is a really cute way to give yourself that gathered look. And they're probably a little too gathered, but this part you can totally adjust it. When I find that I have it gathered as much as I want to, loosen it up a bit, it's a good size opening. I'm gonna take the two ends and I'm gonna just tie a double knot to secure it in place and that way it won't budge on me. Now I'm using an acrylic yarn here. So you can see when I first start to tighten it, it's gonna pull it in a little bit for me. So give it that final adjustment and then tie the square knot to secure it in place. Now the acrylic yarn is gonna be a little bit more flexible than say if you used a, f a wire or a fishing line or something like that. So you'll have some give to work when you're attaching the binding in the next step. So I've just trimmed the tails a little bit down. I mean, you can leave them as long as you want to. We are not gonna take this yarn out. We're leaving it in here. Now, all we need to do, you can see that the basket is already made, but we need to finish off these raw edges at the top. And to do that, we're just gonna use a piece of fabric. 
and we're gonna use our regular quilting techniques to bind it. So I have a strip of fabric here for this size, and if you don't gather it too much, if you leave it kind of like how mine looks, I've cut a piece that measures two and a half inches by 14 inches. And let me just double check the measurement, trim it down to size if I need to. Let's trim this edge a little. to 14 inches, so two and a half by 14. And we're gonna iron it in half, just like you would your binding. We're gonna lay it so that the strip has the pretty side of the fabric facing down this way, and we're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and press. Just to give yourself that crease in the middle there. All right, now always double check this part here. I kind of bring it around and see, it's gonna reach and just barely there. So I'll be able to tug on it a little bit and get it right to where I need it to be. So if you find that it's way, way off, go ahead and cinch your yarn in just a hair more to get it to work for you. But that looks like it'll work fine for me. So I'm gonna take the two ends of this, put them together Pretty sides touching, of course, and then we're gonna just stitch right here a quarter inch seam allowance. Just to turn this into one full round to bind. All right, once that's sewn, you can press your seam open and refold your strip in half. So now you just have a little loop that's fully sewn around and I give it a good press just to get everything to lay flat. All right, so now we're gonna lay this over our basket, raw edges to raw edges. So the raw edges should be facing up right now. And then you can grab pins or your wonder clips and we're gonna stitch this into place. Now the technique that I like to use for finishing off this binding is just like I would use for quilt binding, which is gonna be by hand, but you can do it by machine if you want to as well. All right, so to sew this, it might look a little bit tricky, okay? Because it's small, it's round, and you're trying to figure out how you're gonna get it under your presser foot. What I like to do, and I'll just show you how I do it, I lay it so that the, the strip of the binding is on the bottom side here, and the raw edges are matching and I am stitching from this side. So I'm gonna lay this into my presser foot, put my quarter inch seam on. You can use the edge of your foot as a guide too if you came too far in on those zigzag stitches, no big deal. And I do it so that I can kind of see a peak of that binding fabric underneath, that way I know that they're in line. And so I'm gonna start stitching, back stitch a few. And just take your time. This is not gonna take long because it's a small basket and the, uh, the circle is not that big, but you do need to take your time and make sure you're, gather you're catching all the layers. So stop every little bit and I work it around. Stop. I'm working my way around trying to see where I'm going to be able to gather this up to get it to fit the strip and it's looking like it's going to fit nicely. If you find that you have way too much fabric on the inside here, not enough binding strip, you can always go ahead and just gather it yourself. Kind of just pinch the fabric in like this. It's going to be puckered anyway since it's gathered, right? And just make it fit if you didn't, you know, gauge the size or the length of your strip that well. But you can see mine is going to fit nicely in here. All right, and we're coming up on the end. So I'm gonna back stitch. All right, so once that's done, I kind of just give it a quick look over and see if there's anything bulging out here that I need to trim away if it's not gonna allow me to have an even seam allowance. Otherwise, we're ready to finish off the binding. Just flip it up and flip it inside. 
Now I have a full video tutorial because the way that I do this binding is just like I do all my quilt bindings. So I have a link right here that'll take you to another video I have on showing you step by step how to do the hand sewing part of quilt binding, which would be the same. We're using an invisible stitch here. And I'm just going to show you just a couple steps or just a couple of stitches, I should say, in this video so you get an idea of how it's done. Now let me jump in and say, if you don't want to do it by hand or you don't like hand sewing, you can always do it by machine. To do it by machine, I recommend that you either put a bunch of clips, pins, you can even try glue basting it, just to make sure that you're catching it all the way in on the inside part. I prefer to do the hand sewing just because I feel like I have more control over it. So I have one here that's partially finished and I just have to hand stitch just a little bit more here. And I'm just going to show you, I've come out through the top of the binding part and I go in right underneath into the, the lining fabric and I'm going to come out and under back on that fold of that binding. And the same thing, you come out at the binding, you go in right in the lining fabric in front of it, come through and come out at the fold of that binding. And just continue to do that all the way around until you're done stitching the binding. And then you're done with your super cute reversible quilted basket. So let's go over a few of the different ways that I like to use these little baskets for, because as you can imagine, they have so many different uses. So for the small ones here, I like to keep Wonder Clips in them or any other small supplies that you'd like to have or that you need to have near you in your sewing space. For this one, since my sewing studio is separate from my house, I like to come in here and kind of fill it up with my hand sewing supplies. So my threads, my flosses, my pearl cottons, thimble, needles, and things like that, and then I can just take it with me right inside the house to work on my hand sewing projects in bed or while I sit and watch TV, right? Then I like to keep a nice big one right by my sewing machine as a thread catcher. If you're like me and you trim those threads, I kind of just, you know, drop them every kind of place. And then when I have to sweep the floor, it kind of drives me nuts because it gets caught on everything. So this is a way to keep it a little bit more organized and cleaner. You can snip your threads and dump them right into your little thread basket. And from here, straight into the trash. So I hope you give this project a try and I'm sure that you'll find a lot more uses in your house. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed learning how to make my reversible round quilted baskets. Definitely give the project a try, and if you do, take some pictures, upload them to social media, and tag me. You can find me everywhere. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. You can use the hashtag CraftyGemini. That way I'll be able to see what you're making from my tutorials. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, hit it with the thumbs up below. Remember to share it across the different social media sites and don't forget to click that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!